Hello, it's Dr. Edward here. I've got a different companion helping me out today for today's Q&A, which is Fred, my little fluffy cat here. So welcome. I hope you're enjoying the Pet Anxiety Summit. We now have completed day three. Um, so day two was all about the gut and day three is complementary alternative therapies for anxiety. So we had Joan Franquet about animal communication and how that can help you gain greater understanding so that you can help uh, prevent and heal your pet's anxiety. Dr. Janet Rark talking about essential oils for animals with anxiety. I know that I had a lot of fun and learned a lot in that interview with her. Uh, Dr. Kassara talking about psychedelic medicines, uh, you know, psilocybin and these kinds of things and their future potential for helping anxious pets. It's not at the point where we can actually use them yet, but we talked with Dr. Kassara about um, the, the research that's beginning into that kind of thing. Dr. Jeff, who was with us last year, is back again talking about using homeopathy for healing anxiety. And we had Lisa Spector with music for anxiety. So it was a really fascinating and interesting day. So how many of you do we have live with us today? We've got 34 of you so far. No doubt more of you will join in as we go along. Um, before we dive into the questions, I just want to remind you to jump all over the amazing products that our sponsors for this event offer. We've got the Well Pet Dispensary who um, have a broad range of amazing products, one of which is CBD for pets. And CBD is one of the medicines that I nearly always give to every anxious animal that I see when I have them come to see me as a veterinarian. They have a, an, a really lovely uh, ebook for you to download in the members area, The Truth About Pet Anxiety. Then we have Polypet Products who have... Um, another product line of supplements, particularly they've got some awesome probiotics. And as you learned in day two, fixing your pet's gut health can have really profoundly positive effects on their neurological, mental, emotional state of being and can really help with preventing and, and healing anxiety in your pets. There's also a free ebook from them in the members area, which you can download, which is Reducing Anxiety, an Objective Guide to a Stress-Free Pet. Um, and of course, there's an awesome ebook from me in the members area as well, which is all about understanding, recognizing, preventing, and treating anxiety holistically in pets. It's a very comprehensive little ebook where I go through all the different kinds of holistic, complementary type treatments. And I've, there's information about dogs and cats in there. So um, we've got a big thank you. Uh, to all the wonderful speakers from Pet Summit. And um, and he says, you've helped me hugely along the way towards gaining self-empowerment, becoming a better pet guardian, which is awesome. Thank you so much for your kind words. We always like to hear what people have liked about this. And right now, I need you to start typing. Because a Q&A session without any questions is not much of a Q&A session. So no matter... Uh, what little tiny questions you have or big questions about your pets. If you have deeper questions about anxiety in general or different kinds of approaches for helping anxiety, I'd really love to hear from you. Let me know in the chat too, what's your favourite presentation from the summit so far in the first three days? We've got Gardston who really enjoyed the music seminar. We've only got one question queued up so far, so I really, really, really need you to ask some questions. Otherwise, it's going to be, I'll have to just blather on. So from S. Taylor, um, the first part of that question, if you just pop up the first part of that question first, please, Gindy, because it's the second part. Thank you. I agreed to dog sit for a pit cross before the owner revealed that the dog had bad separation anxiety. Other than not leaving the dog alone, what proactive measures can I take to prevent displays of separation anxiety? I have lavender oil and a diffuser. So um, if you do need to leave the dog alone, that's going to trigger the separation anxiety. In terms of being proactive, um, I suppose touch, 
relaxing touch. You certainly, lavender oil will help and diffusing lavender oil in the house will help. But I suppose one important thing to do for you will be to, um, how can you not leave the dog alone if your dog's sitting? Now, if that's not possible, then um, maybe asking the owner what they do when they leave the dog alone so that you get really informed about what kind of strategies they've been using to um, make sure that the dog is okay when left alone or as okay as possible. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of a tricky question that you're asking me because all the proactive measures that you're learning in this summit are going to help, but you've only got a, probably a short space of time which you're going to be hanging out with this dog in. So you might not have the time to really put into practice all of these things that could make a good difference. However, you know, do everything that you can, even just putting some rescue remedy um, on your hands and wiping it over the dog before you before you leave may help. Having some rescue remedy in the water so that the, the dog's getting some of this more energetic kind of calming, soothing type um, influence coming into, into the system will also help. So, so those are things that you can do. Um, the other thing is, you know, don't try to overcomfort the dog before you leave. Uh, just get out of there as quick as you can, get what you need to do done as quick as you can, get back as quick as you can. Uh, if, if, it, if you do have to leave the dog alone, make sure you minimise the amount of time that you do leave them alone. Okay, so how many hours are in each session of your upcoming workshop? I saw that it begins at five in the US, but I don't see how long the program is each day. Um, Gindi, I'm hoping that you might be able to pull out the exact details for that because it's so long since I spoke to Isaac about organising that. But but basically, it's um, it's two. There's there's be a two pretty long sessions each day with a break in the middle. Um, I cannot remember exactly how many hours, but we'll make sure that we get that information for you, hopefully before the end of this, this Q&A, and I'll definitely have that information for you tomorrow. Okay, we need some questions, please. Um, Gindi said that she will check the exact hours and post it in the comments section here in the chat a little bit later. So let's talk a little bit about the workshop. Um, you've got to have a plan to really meet a complex problem like anxiety in your pets. You need to be um, kind of structured. You need to have a map that will lead you through all the processes that you need to move through to be able to really, really make a difference for your pets in the medium and in the long term. And that's why I keep on banging on about the importance of, of creating and implementing a, a holistic pet anxiety treatment plan. And that is what I'm going to take you through in the two-day workshop. Step by step, we'll go through the, the environment, environmental awareness, environmental modification to um, reduce triggers that might cause anxiety in your pets. Uh, we'll go through the whole um, behavior modification, which we'll be talking about positive reinforcement training in that place and, and the way that I've developed, which is an innovative and unique way of behavior modification, which is through using relaxing touch. And you're going to be practicing and learning the relaxing touch with me live in the webinar so that you have an everyday, beautiful, loving intervention that you can use with your pets to um, prevent anxiety and to heal anxiety. Then we get into medication. We'll talk about all the different kinds of interventions, the things that you can do to help heal your pet's anxiety. So that is uh, includes uh, supplements, uh, holistic treatments like medications, more holistic medications, herbal medicines, homeopathy, essences, energy healing, animal communication, all those sort of things, and also escalating to prescription medication uh, if 
all the other holistic things don't work, sometimes we do get the best outcomes with holistic medication. And then we talk about um, also going into the um, monitoring, ongoing monitoring of your animals and assessing what interventions are working and how well they're working and all that sort of thing. Okay, so we've got a few questions and I would like you all to get typing so that we get a few more questions because that's important. So we've got a question from Erin. Other than systematic desensitization, do you have any suggestions or recommend methods to resolve car anxiety if you cannot suspend car rides? So systematic desensitization um, takes time and it, it is complex and, and often does take quite a long time to get the animal into the point where they, that they that you get the results that you want. So number one, I would be getting into as many of the different kinds of supplements and more energy-based type remedies like flower essences, maybe trying energy healing, animal communication, all these things. Uh, the more different things you try, the more you're going to find out what works and doesn't work so that you can focus more on doing what does work and maybe not worrying so much about what doesn't work. Again, I tend to use touch, which is um, not so much desensitization as behavior modification. So if you start off at home doing relaxing touch every day, then your animal is learning how to go into deeper and deeper states of relaxation and how to the whole body mind systems learning how to move from these anxious states into healthy relaxation. And then they're also getting conditioned that they'll relax more and more quickly and more deeply with touch the more you do it. So what I'd do with a dog like that then is I'd probably go and I'd hang out in the car with them and do a whole lot of relaxing touch until they relaxed. And once I got them to the point where, okay, I can relax in the car and nothing terrible happened. I've learned that over time. It might take weeks, might take longer. Then I might get someone else in the car to start the car up for a little bit and turn it off. And the dog might go, oh, God, the car's motor started. And, you know, so this is kind of like a systematic desensitization, but it's also using touch at the same time to actively help the animal regulate into relaxation in the face of the trigger. Um, and, you know, if this is severe and you cannot suspend car drives, depending on how frequently you need to go in the car, if it's occasional trips in the car, then situational prescription medication like gabapentin, trazodone and, and other things like that can be a really good um, bridge to help you not cause more suffering for your animal and to not reinforce and make the anxiety worse and worse every time they get in the car because that's what tends to happen. Um, that can be an an important part of a strategy as well if the more holistic type things are not working. So we've got 49 of you live with us now, which is totally awesome. Okay, so Muddy Paws, got a good username, I like your handle. I have three dogs with fear aggression. We've been with a behavioral vet, I presume, vet for a year. Two are better, one is still extremely anxious. Along with meds, I've used AE, which I'm not quite sure what that is, flower essences, music, touch, diet, gut. Um, any suggestions on what more I can do with him? So depending on what kind of touch you've used, I would encourage you to consider coming along and uh, letting me show you the the really advanced therapeutic touch skills that, that I've created and teach in the whole energy body balance method because um, it's nearly always when I work with dogs like this that have this kind of behavior, particularly this reactive type fear aggression, there's pain somewhere in the body. And soft tissue pain, neck and back pain is something that dogs will not show you any obvious signs of until you feel into their body, which is part of what I teach you to do in that, in that program. And it's... Pain, if you haven't dealt with pain, the anxiety is not going to go away. And the, the other side of this is that the better you get and the broader range of hands-on skills you have, the more you can be able to help your animals relax in the face of, of triggers. So I had um, 
my favorite white fluffy dog in the world, Emma Bella, who's a, a Samoy who come to see me yesterday. I've been working with her for probably more than two years now. And when she first came in, she had severe, severe reactive aggression with the other dog in the household, would just try to kill that dog anytime they were allowed to have any contact. Um, she'd been to vets and to a, a behavior, specialist behavior vet, and they'd all missed that she had really severe neck pain. Now, we did body work, and the more we fixed the neck pain, the less the, the aggression was. And now she's back to being able to interact and even rumble and play with her friend now that we've got rid of the thing. So any any dog with this kind of reactive, aggressive type behavior, I think it's incredibly important to um, make sure that there's no pain because soft tissue pain, neck and back pain, the only way you can effectively find it is to bring pressure into the body and bring pressure into the sore areas. I mean, if I just get you to bring a little bit of pressure into your own forearm, you'll probably find some pain and tension that until you bring pressure into it, you won't know is there. But it's still having an effect on function and comfort in your body. So, yeah, that's um, that's a hard one. It's a tough one for me to be able to really help you a lot, but it's that's that's what I would recommend. Hi from Central Florida. I have two dogs, an English Mastiff, almost seven, rescue, and a Great Dane Argentinian Mastiff, just over four, both neutered males. I'll think about how to ask my question. Let's see if Carol's actually asked a question further down. She has. Right down a little way. We have a lot of daily thunderstorms. The Dane mix has anxiety from this and fireworks. I've used CBD, touch, and a thunder shirt. How did you work on your own anxiety to help Mitzi? Well, your state of being when it comes to your um, nervous system and your levels of stress and how anxious you are and all that sort of thing do have a really strong effect on your dog. They tend to come into resonance with you and, and their nervous system comes into this kind of nervous thing. So I think one of the things that's helped Misty, Mitzi, my dog, most of all was that I got out of narcissistic abusive relationships and marriage because um, it took me a couple of years to really heal from the post-traumatic stress from that. But as my nervous system settled, I could see all my pets settled as well. As I um, gained, as I seeked help to uh, to process and integrate and heal my trauma, I could see the benefits for my animals. So that's one thing that is really good. If you're using CBD, um, then um, you might need to look at the dose rate. You can give up to three milligrams per kilogram twice a day at the really higher end of the dose range scale. If you're using touch, well, then increasing your touch skills, which you will learn in the anxiety workshop that we're going to be offering after this. I'll be showing you how the, the most powerful therapeutic touch skills that cause the strongest relaxation that, that I've discovered in 27 years of working with tens of thousands of animals. Um, you know, I used touch to help my old whippet basically with thunderstorms and I used a lot of touch over a long time and the more I did touch, the better she got basically and that, that's what I see pretty much with everyone who who comes and, and I, who I work with and teach how to do the right kind of touch to cause relaxation in, in your animals. It sounds like you're doing quite a few things um, but you might want to explore some of the other more holistic things that have been mentioned, you know, maybe get Lisa Spector's music, see if that helps. Uh, all those kinds of things can help. Okay, what's our next question? Also, this is Taylor. So we had a question from you before. This is the dog that you had, the dog sitting and have to leave alone. Also, I have a 15-year-old dog that is practically blind, partly deaf, and is beginning to show signs of canine cognitive di dysfunction or doggy dementia, as I like to call it. When I give her food-scented puzzles and take her for slow walks, she seems calmer. So canine cognitive dysfunction can 
nearly always uh, increases existing anxiety when dogs develop canine cognitive dysfunction. And there's a lot of dogs that didn't have anxiety before they got doggy dementia that then develop anxiety as part of the whole dementia problem. Um, I find CBD is one of the most amazing medicines around for canine cognitive dysfunction. Another thing to be really aware of is with these older dogs that are getting canine cognitive dysfunction is it's super, super important to check out their pain levels. And if they do have pain, to get them on regular, appropriate levels of, of, of pain relief medication. Now, when you get to a dog this age, um, I, I stop worrying so much about side effects and I start worrying about quality of life. When you get to this kind of end stage, really old animals, pain relief is really important. And that's when I will, if, if we've already used all the kind of um, more natural things like green lip muscle extract and CBD and, and rose hip bite oil and uh, golden paste, all of those kinds of things. Homeopathy can help a lot sometimes and, and various other supplements and healthy diet. If you've still got really high levels of pain, then I, I will be wanting to add in prescription pain relief, um, you know, the um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and things like that. And I have seen, and, and body work too, uh, soft tissue body work can really relieve a lot of pain for these older animals. I've seen a lot of these older demented dogs that when you control their pain, their dementia improves out of sight. Another one from Ms. Taylor, can you speak to the effectiveness of physical mental exercise for reducing anxiety? My favorite sessions were about the brain gut connection. Yeah, I think anything that brings your dog's cognition online and gets them thinking and learning and and doing stuff it generally is just the best thing that you can do so doing that ongoing if you do that as a puppy well your puppy or your, or your kitten then learns you know what are the boundaries around acceptable non-acceptable behavior you need to have with your dogs you need to have a good recall and obedience in the face of stimulation and excitement so that you can keep your dog safe in in whatever context you're, you're moving through with them. So it's really, really important. And I think any kinds of puzzles and games and enrichment like this are, are really helpful and calming. If you get an animal's brain tired, they tend to relax and settle. And one thing that I used to do uh, quite a bit with my dogs is I'd get Ziwi Peak, which is like a dehydrated meat type food, and I would scatter little bits of Ziwi Peak all over the backyard. And then my dogs would be sniffing, snuffling around and looking everywhere, finding, having a little nibble. Sometimes they'd be sniffing around for half an hour after all the little bits of, of this food were gone. Then they'd come in, lie down and have a big sleep. It, it's very relaxing. And, and yes, this whole thing of not only is there benefits in helping the animal be calmer and more relaxed from doing this kind of mental work, puzzles, training, games, all that sort of thing, it deepens and builds your bond and connection. That human-animal bond gets stronger and, and there's benefits at both ends of the leash for that. Okay, Cheryl. There's another one up a little further that, that we have missed too from Gardston that we'll do next, take Indy. So Cheryl says, Moy and Poodle with severe destructive separation anxiety. Training to be a service dog, except for jumping on people. She's doing well in that area, destroys carpets and barks for hours. Desperate. I feel you, Cheryl. It is so, so difficult and challenging, particularly when, you, when you, you've when got a dog that you're hoping to be your um, companion support dog like this. And, and things are not going so well. So the first thing, if you've got that level of destruction, I would encourage you to do everything in your power not to leave this dog alone at home because every time you leave the dog alone at home, it's building the problem. It's making the anxiety 
anxiety bigger and stronger and it's making this you know and not only that this is this is a dog that if they're displaying those kinds of destructive behaviors that's a reflection of really intense suffering and distress that the animal's going on inside so you know it's really important i think to remember that when we have these anxious animals that their anxiety symptoms are destructive and and a, you know a problem for the human it really is an expression that the animal is going through intense fear and suffering now so that would be the first step first step i would say is um i, I would really really do everything that you can not to ever leave that dog alone now your second step is going to be working out uh, an anxiety treatment plan you're going to need to be working with with a range of professionals you know you'll need to have a holistic vet if you want to work with me i am available online you can find me at thehealingvet.com i do online sessions you're going to need a regular vet so that you can um check for any kind of metabolic issues you can check for any kind of um other structural issues maybe there's some kind of neck issue or spinal issue or some other issue that you might pick up on an x-ray you're going to need to work out how to assess this animal for soft tissue pain and and then you're going to be needing to do a whole lot of different things touch um, energetic things like essences and energy healing and animal communication supplements like C cbd um, working with a really good trainer someone who's got expertise about about separation anxiety in dogs and Ness Jones who's one of our speakers on this summit is someone that you might want to contact because you do need to do desensitization over an, it probably an extended period of time with this dog but you can get dogs like this to a point where they can really improve now and therapeutic touch is always the cornerstone of my work with these kinds of anxious animals now not every animal responds in the same way but I have had one dog that had really destructive separation anxiety that within two weeks of all the family giving him a lot of relaxing body work, the separation anxiety had gone away. And I would really, you know, give you a heartfelt invitation to come along to the, to the workshop so that you can go through the process of building a holistic treatment plan and um, then, you know, put it into practice step by step uh there's every chance that you'll be able to make a really big difference for your beautiful dog if you do that um Gardston says one of the dogs used to be bomb proof with noises but the past year or so is really jumpy with sudden noises like something falling or dishes rattling any thoughts so it's not unusual for dogs to develop an anxiety thing over time and you know it's not uncommon when i'm doing a consultation and I remember when I was in the vet hospital, when I was working in the hospital, which I'm, I'm just working out on my own again now, there's often kind of strange noises happen in the vet hospital, right? And often there'd be a noise and, and the dog would just go like that, a little startle. I say, oh, your dog's got a noise sensitivity. And the people go, really? I didn't notice. So often there's been this kind of mild sensitivity for ages and it's been building up and building up and building up and building up. And suddenly the the startle to the noise is at a level that you start to notice and like nearly all anxiety issues um you're you're gonna there's going to be a long tail of mild symptoms before suddenly you hit a threshold where the human notices that there's a problem um what can you do about that all of the things i've been talking about number one thing i would recommend is that you you learn how to do the relaxing touch and you do a lot of it and if there's a noise you know you do a lot of it when there's nothing going on to help train them into deep relaxation and how to move into deep relaxation then you do a whole lot of it anytime there's a trigger because what's happening is that that noise your dog thinks is a tiger you know i'm that your dog perceives that noise as a fearful thing that's going to cause them harm so when you use touch for long enough, the body relaxes and then the mind starts going, wow, the noise happened and I could relax with that touch. Nothing bad happened. 
So this is where you get over time the, the animal's thinking process, which is a big part of the anxiety is their thoughts and their worries and their fears about this thing that they perceive to be fearful and dangerous. This is where touch work over time can also then the mind can catch up and learn that they can relax in the face of this trigger and, oh, maybe it wasn't such a scary thing after all. Junko says, I love the relaxing touch method. I'd love to try CBD for our dog. Is there a specific brand or kind that you would be able to recommend? I would encourage you to pop in and check out the CBD product that um, the Well Pet Dispensary offer. It's a really good product, uh, and I think you'd find that that would be as good as anything. But in general, if I'm talking about CBD and what I want to prescribe, I want to have an organically grown whole plant extract that is CBD rich and has little or no THC in it. Now, the reason that I like a whole plant extract is that not only does it have a whole lot of CBD in it, it has a whole lot of a whole lot of other cannabinoids in there. They all work together synergistically. You get what's called the entourage effect, and I find that it is more effective. We've got 54 of you online with us now, which is all kinds of awesome. Oh, hang on a second. Well, my computer does something weird. Okay. From Joanna. I have a 16-month-old dog that has never been left alone, mostly due to my own anxiety. I fear that I've left it too late and he is not at all used to being left on his own. Okay, Joanna. Um, first thing is if you're not actively seeking some help, with your anxiety, then I would think that the best thing you could do would be to go and find some kind of therapist. I know that when I had anxiety and post-traumatic stress, I found somatic experiencing to be an incredibly helpful kind of therapy for to help me to come back into my body, to learn how to relax and to learn how to process all that trauma that was in my system. So your self-care is incredibly important. And something that I would encourage you to, to, to do as much of as you can. Um, then the next thing is it, it might be a bit of a journey for you to help your dog to learn how to self-regulate as an individuated being. So uh, another thing that I find that often happens is that people who do have anxiety and they have a dog, there is often this very, very strong um kind of codependent type thing where the human's depending on the dog to help them regulate and the dog's depending on the human to help them regulate so the more you can individuate yourself and start to regulate yourself then the more that's going to help your dog and you can also another thing that i do with this is that i i talk to people about ways to to physically and energetically individuate individuate from their dog this is something that i do a lot with my clients and it's something that I'm probably going to talk about in next year's summit because it's something that I've only man only discovered how to do in the last um, three to six months. I've seen some incredible uh, shifts in humans and animals when I get this sense of, well, how about we get the human being just the human by themselves and the dog being their individual self. You still have a beautiful connection, but you can be co-independent co and co-empowered together. Now, um, Another thing, Joanna, that will really help you is, is the touch work that I teach. And if you come along to the workshop, post-summit workshop, you'll learn how to do that because when you do the relaxing touch with your animal, it relaxes you, the human, too. And I've had a lot of clients who've told me, wow, you know, my anxiety has improved out of sight after I've been doing this touch work with my dog for you know a number of weeks or months. There's this beautiful co-regulation, a really healthy co-regulation that happens when you use relaxing touch regularly with your pets. It helps you relax, it helps them relax, and everyone improves. Now, when it comes to your dog, um, the first thing to do will be to teach them an out command or an on your bed command and get your dog spending some time a little way away from you in the house. And if they, you know, you might set a timer in the beginning for five minutes, right? You, you've got to stay out of my close personal space for five minutes. 
then come and have cuddles. If five minutes is too much, you might just do one minute to begin with and then stretch that time out more and more. You, and, and on the bed command, on your bed. No, stay on your bed. And you build up the amount of time that your dog has to stay on their bed. Maybe it'll start off with you just sitting in your chair and they stay on the bed. Then you might get up and start moving around doing things. No, you have to stay on your bed, on your bed. Now, your dog might find that a little bit challenging at first. There might be a little bit of frustration, a little bit of anxiety. Oh, I can't be right on top of my human. I can't, I haven't got my human. But if you give them the time and space to regulate their way through that, they'll start learning how to regulate themselves into relaxation. Now, that, that's just the beginnings of this. Then you might move to, um, you know, having the, the, where they are on their bed further away from you. You might leave the room while getting them to stay on the bed. And you can stretch it out in a, in a range of different ways. But it is possible to do what you want to do. Um, from A. Jenkins, how to deal with a cat with separation anxiety. Apartment living with long hours at work. The cat is very aggressive to other cats. So I'm presuming it's just a single cat. So all the things that I've talked about with separation anxiety for the dog um, are going to be the same for the cat. Certainly, I would get a feely way diffuser and I would be diffusing the pheromones in your home the whole time. I'd be putting flower essences in the water bowl. I'd be um, looking at the diet and the energetic of the diet uh, to see if we can um, make sure that we've got kind of cooling, calming foods and not hot anxiety provoking foods like um, kibble with a whole lot of grains in it. Um, I would be seeing what I could do with enrichment for this cat, seeing if you can do a, a lot of enrichment when you are there uh, so that you, again, get this kind of mental, emotional tiredness from exercising the brain and the mind. And energy work is something that I use quite a lot too with, with these kinds of animals. It's, it's a totally different energy healing type work, is a totally different paradigm, and often we can shift um, the energetics and then we get improvements in behavior. It's not unusual that I see that. Erin, Elizabeth, let me go back to where you were before. Uh, this is your car anxiety one. Touch seems to make it worse. I've tried energy work and communication supplements, GABA and TRAS. How would you suggest adjusting the touch? The dog has to go to the clinic with her mum each day. Her mum is a vet. Been using bilateral tapping, just looking some variations if touch increases the anxiety. So one of the things that can happen with these really anxious dogs is that when you start the relaxing touch, it feels really strange and uncomfortable for that animal to relax and they might feel very unsafe. So what I see again and again with the animals I work with, particularly when I first start working with them, I'll start doing relaxing touch and see the animal's body will relax and they might go, I can't relax, I can't relax. I'm crazy, I've got to be anxious, there's a tiger in the room. You keep doing the touch, and they relax and arouse, and you get this kind of arousal relaxation cycle, but the longer you do the touch, the deeper the relaxation and the longer the re relaxation periods come. So I talk about this thing of with some of these animals, you need gentle persistence. It's like, right, this is touch medicine. And you might feel like it doesn't taste too good right now, dog, but we're going to put the timer on and you're going to have your touch medicine. Uh, so there is that too. But I would suggest, Erin, that that it might be good to to work with me personally on one like that because they these dogs can get quite avoidant and wriggly and don't touch me. And I find that it really helps if you have someone like me to talk you through how to do it and and help you, at least in the beginning. Buki says, I was fortunate to find a, a TCVM, which is a traditional Chinese veterinary medicine practitioner that helped one of my dogs with noise phobia, fireworks and gunshots tremendously. Might be something to consider for those who have not tried that. Yes, yes. So acupuncture, uh, TCVM, uh, really beautiful holistic modalities that can be incredibly supportive. From Gersten. 
Hard to fill in all the details. Um, she's raw fed, no chemicals, minimal vax. We do some homeopathy and the whole energy body balance work, which is the body work I teach. You need to do it more consistently. The more consistently you do it, the better results you're going to get. Have you? Um, Carol said, missed the first two days, unfortunately. Is there somewhere you can suggest to look for a good probiotic supplement? We just started adding Dynavite a couple of weeks ago. So we do have a one of our sponsors has um, really lovely probiotic supplements, so polypetproducts.com. You can drop into them and they will definitely be able to help you out. Have you heard of any anecdotal evidence of the use of Kratom in anxiety in dogs? I have not actually heard anything of the um of that so it looks to me just doing a quick little google that you would need to be careful about dose rate um there's no real studies or not a lot of evidence just yet um so it it is something that if you're going to experiment with would be really uh very um you'd want to be very cautious about dose rates and you'd want to start off at a very low dose and then gradually gradually titrate it you'd want to be cautious about potential interactions um so it's just a, i'm just doing a little bit of research on the fly here uh, it works like opioids such as morphine. It has pain relieving effects like opioid drugs. It also has the same serious safety concern as other opioids and humans use it for withdrawal from heroin. There's not really a whole lot of evidence and my uh, advice would be not to use Kratom with that very little quick little bit of Googling that I've just done. It's not something that I would give to my pets. I don't think that any kind of opiate type drug is the thing that you want to use in anxiety anyway. From Lana, we have nine-year-old rescue dogs badly abused and attacked by other dogs, adopted three years ago. So okay with most people, but extremely reactive to other dogs. Tried behaviourists and trainers, no help. So Lana, you know, I would encourage you to try a lot of the things that we've been showing you and all the speakers have been showing you in this summit and i just want to say that some dogs just do better staying at home and not going out and not interacting with other dogs and if you've got an older dog like this with a really traumatic history who's really reactive with other dogs you know what sometimes you can't fix it and sometimes these dogs are happier just staying at home and not being exposed to other dogs because being exposed to other dogs is terrifying for them. And that's why they're showing this reactive behavior. And I've, I've had a number of clients who've had dogs like this. And when I've said this, it's kind of a, a mixed look of relief and kind of confusion comes over their face. But they say, but, but surely I have to give my dog a walk every day or that'd be terrible. I say, well, no, not if the balance of of good on and harm is there's more harm in the walk than good there's plenty of dogs that can just stay at home where they feel safe if these anxious types dogs and and there's some dogs that i just say well you know what we just avoid the trigger you don't take your dog out and you don't expose them to other dogs and that's okay Do you do case consults? I do do online um, consultations and integrative and holistic veterinary mentoring. And Erin says it's also known for mood boosting the Kratom, but again, it's not something that I would personally take and it's not something I would recommend for animals. If it's an opiate type thing, well, it can make you feel better, but it'll also be highly addictive and, and have other problems that are not so good. So we've run out of questions for the moment. We've still got a little bit more time. It's not an opioid, no, but it's it works through the same types of receptors, so it's not something that I'd recommend. 
crate on. There's not enough. I, I don't think it would be safe enough for me to want to use with my animals. Let's just quickly remind you of our um, that there's a beautiful ebook from me that you can get in your members area. Please make sure you grab it and download it and read it. It's a really good little Bible for you to use when you come to understanding, recognizing, preventing and treating anxiety holistically in your pets. We've got an ebook from polypets.com as well that is free for you in your members area to download which Gindy's going to pop that up in just a second when she finds it. Uh, under, no, that's the same one, Gindy. You put mine up again. Uh, reducing Anxiety, an Objective Guide to a Stress-Free Pet. And then we have wellpetdispensary.com. They have uh, another ebook, which is The Truth About Pet Anxiety from, from Well Pet Dispensary. Um, if you haven't grabbed your VIP pass just yet, uh, be aware that the price is going to go up at the end of the summit. It's incredibly good value. Not only do you get all lifetime access to all of the presentations from this year, you also get lifetime access to all of the presentations from last year. And there's a whole lot of other goodies. It's it's a massive package of um, discount vouchers and, and other free downloads and things like that. But some new comments. Michelle, what has been my biggest takeaway from this wonderful summit? I think my biggest takeaway has been, wow, the microbiome in the gut is somewhere that I have not really been um, thinking about enough and intervening enough with the way that I treat anxious animals. And I'm going to be getting into this fecal microbiota transplant uh, with with the animals that I work with in, in a really comprehensive way because after talking to Dr. Roman, I've gone, wow, I mean, you know, fecal transplants have kind of been in the background somewhere as something that I've wanted to learn more about and use. But after talking to Dr. Roman, it's like, whoa, these things can have the most profoundly beneficial effect on our anxious animals and, and gut health. And if you fix gut health, you fix the immune system as well. So it's not just anxiety that that can help, but the whole being. Who's got some more questions for me? Cheryl says, can I speak to someone to help me decide which package to buy? Is that, um, are, you, are you talking about the summit? I presume. If you, Gindy, you'll probably be able to pop up an email. Um, and Gindy, if you could just put an email in the chat for Cheryl to contact the Pet Summits team so that she can find someone to talk to, that'd be super helpful. What other questions have we got? Um, I'm really excited about teaching this workshop in a few weeks' time. It uh, Last year, when we taught it, it made such a profoundly beneficial impact with um, all the people who attended. We had lots of stories of people seeing some really, really good changes in their animals. And it's not only that, we had a whole lot of fun. And, you know, we get to hang out together. You get to learn. I teach you how to do the relaxing touch from the whole energy body balance method. You should be able to use every day to make a beautiful difference for your anxious pets. Are there any more questions? Have we emptied you all out of questions? Do we have any more cat questions? We've got Fred here who's just turned into a little curled up ball of purring bliss. Okay, I've just received a German Shepherd dog from a rescue group. She'll go without warning into a frenzied state. Have you ever given up on a dog? She may be too much for me. So um, some dogs are too much and it is the best thing you can do to actually uh, send them back to the rescue organization or, or do whatever thing you need to do i have had a couple of dogs that i haven't been able to work with over the years um and i have had a couple of dogs that i've had to euthanize due to aggression or really really severe anxiety 
because of quality of life or because of danger to other people. And this was generally after kind of trying everything and getting to a point where nothing would work. In fact, oh, this is probably going to make me a bit sad telling you this story, but I had a beautiful black Labrador called Bo many, many years ago. And um, he was definitely not a healthy dog in a mental sense. He was frightened of everyone and everything except me and my, my son. Even my dad, who's really good with dogs, could never get Bo to come and say hello to him. I think one day I hung a, a towel on the washing machine to dry and he barked at it for three hours. Anything new was extremely stressful for him. Then we moved into town. There's a lot of foot traffic and a, and a pathway beside our house. Uh, he was super, super aggressive, barking at everyone through the fence, getting worse and worse. Everything I tried, now this is a long time ago, so I didn't know all the holistic stuff that I know now and I didn't know how to use relaxing touch and a whole lot of other stuff. But I gave him some chicken next one day and went back to pick the bag up and he chomped me and, and you know, major puncture wounds on my hand. And I had a five-year-old kid and he was unrehomable. So I had to put him to sleep. So it does happen that you do get dogs that are either too much for you or who have such severe problems that they're, they're so broken that we can't heal them. It does happen. It's really hard. Um, and yes, I have had dogs that I've worked with as as a vet where, where I've encouraged the humans to give up on the dog because the human doesn't have the capacity or the dog doesn't have the capacity to, to, to be able to work with them. And it, there's danger and there's suffering and, it, and, it, and it's not, you know, you sometimes get a dog that's just not the right dog for the people. If you get a really, really high drive um, working type dog, you need a specific set of skills and a lot of time and energy to work with that kind of dog. And if you don't have it, then they might not be the right dog. Um, the, the ones that go without warning into this frenzied panic state, they're one of the more difficult ones with anxiety to help. Yeah. What about ozone? Ozone therapy is um something that can be incredibly helpful for dealing with infections and bacteria and all that sort of stuff and dr roman when she's doing the fecal microbiota transplants puts ozone gas in per rectum before she puts in the enema with the bacteria in to to basically kill the biofilm of bacteria that are that are in um in there to, so that then the good bacteria don't have any competition so not so much directly for anxiety, but it is something that can be helpful. Julia says, I have a very friendly pup that loves everyone and all animals, but is running into trouble getting along with a new shy Russian grey kitten, kitty. The cat does not like to be seen nor socialised, causing stress. Um, I would have a bit of segregation in this kind of thing. The cat needs to have somewhere that it feels like is safe and there's no dog going to come up and, and be scary. So maybe you have one room that is just for the kitty uh, and then hopefully you'll be able to let the kitty out and over time the kitty will adjust to, you know, interacting with the dog. Again, you can use all of the different kinds of things you've learned about in this summit, the, the essences, the uh, animal communication sometimes can really help in these situations, energy healing, homeopathy, um, CBD, all these things can help. But slowly, slowly, make sure that cat's got a safe space that is only the cat's space, and that will probably help an incredibly large amount. From A. Jenkins, can anxiety in dogs cause allergic type paw licking? If so, where to start after diet change, probiotics, leaky gut fix, acupuncture? So anxiety doesn't directly cause allergies, but anxiety does mean that the whole body's in a state of stress, which means that anxieties can get worse. I mean, allergies can get worse due to anxiety, and because you're then itchy, itchy being itchy also increases anxiety. So it's a bit of a kind of a feedback loop and not a good one. I know that. One of our students had an extraordinarily anxious dog um, 
who had a very traumatic history, had very bad allergies and very bad gut issues that really didn't respond much to prescription medication and veterinary attention. But um, she found that with doing the web body work, at first this dog was like, don't touch me. It took her a couple of weeks of gentle persistence to get the dog ready and allowing touch. And then he was kind of going, oh, that's pretty good. Give me more. Uh, within about eight weeks, the anxiety was pretty much gone and over about six to nine months without any other change in treatment, but using the body work, all the allergies and gut issues just about completely resolved too. They're about 95% better. Um, is it possible to get a dog who's not super friendly with people to overcome this fear? Well, yes, but then my next question is why? Do you Is there a purpose? Do you just think your dog should be friendly with other people? I mean, some dogs are really not, they're just they're not people people. And it's like I'm quite a bit of an introvert. And if you made me go out and talk to people all the Every night of the week, I'd be going stir crazy by the end of the week. I like a lot of own time. So you might, you have dogs that are more introvert type dogs and more extrovert type dogs. And it's really important to not force dogs into doing things just because you think it might be the right, the best thing to do when sometimes it is not. So that's, um, but on the other hand from that, yes, it is possible to help animals socialize in this way even when they're adult adult animals but it takes time you need to work out how to do that in a sensible way with the help of a positive reinforcement trainer and and a strategy and a long-term structured um, process julia says that we have uh, an almost one-year-old cat also that's a bit sketchy too. So, yeah, you need to um, have a cat zone where the cats feel safe and you also need to realise that there may be stress between any time you bring a new cat into the household. It often takes quite a little bit of time to get through that. From Cheryl, I have two cats. They're not getting along, both adopted, five years and eight year. The younger one jumps on me and attacks when the other kitty is around and now I do not trust him I want to keep him what to do well this is a bit of a complex one and again all of the things that you've learned in this summit are worth trying I definitely uh, encourage you to consider the more intuitive type approaches of um, animal communication energy healing I would do some segregation uh, this is one thing with cats that that if they don't get along, and particularly if if the one jumps on you when the other kitty is around, that's a sign that that cat is in fairly high levels of stress and arousal and it's out picturing in this kind of fight-flight response that's being targeted on you, maybe because they're afraid of actually turning it on to the, the other um, animal. Yes, so that, that's a tricky one, um, but some kind of segregation maybe having only one cat in the room with you at a time uh, could be helpful and see if you do some of the other interventions that you've learned in this, perhaps then you'll notice that overall things get better. So this is Cheryl from the, the one who's not so happy about other humans. She sees people and backs away, makes walking difficult, not looking to turn into Lassie just to walk in public more easily. Um, well, positive reinforcement, uh, using relaxing touch can really help with these animals so that you use it at home to set them up and then if you see a person, you stop and you do the relaxing touch until the person goes past and your dog settles into relaxation. I've had a lot of our students have seen really good changes in this kind of reactive behaviour in their dogs with using relaxing touch. Okay, we are done for today. That is day three, done and dusted. I'll be back tomorrow for day four. It's been all sorts of fun hanging out with you. Make sure you go into the members area, download your three free ebooks from the two sponsors and one from myself. Um, if you haven't grabbed your VIP pass, super affordable, incredible value, and the price will go up at the end of the summit. And otherwise, um, I really hope that we're going to see you in the pet, uh, in the workshop, the workshop where we're going to be going through creating and 
um, implementing a holistic pet anxiety treatment plan, which can be used for prevention or for healing of anxiety in your pets. It's going to be a stack of fun. It'll give you a whole lot of clarity and a really easy to implement, simple way to, to take the complication out of healing your beautiful animals. So thank you so much. Goodbye for now. I'll see you back again tomorrow. Thank you for all the beautiful questions. You've been awesome.